Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade and this is How to App on iOS. Today we have a very special guest on the show. It is Cold Acre. He's joining me live here in the studio. And we're going to kick off with one of his songs very shortly. So stick around for the next two hours. It's going to be an in-studio interview. Grab your nuts, everybody. Let's ouch.
Hello and welcome to the show. You're all doing well. You're seeing me in a little bit of a different way today. We're doing an in-person studio interview. It's a little bit exciting, so you see, get to see a little bit uh, different view. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, there's about 40 of you here today. You're all doing well. Yeah, you're all good. So we opened the show there with a little bit of a sad thing today. Uh, it was a little bit of a memoriam for uh, the cake. Uh, Leela's Puss Puss passed away yesterday. So our heart goes out to Leela today. We love you, Leela. We're all thinking of you. We love you so much. So today's show is dedicated to the cake. And I'm sure my guest today will be uh, completely fine with that. And uh, he helped me set it all up and stuff. Well, he didn't really. He just sat there and got drunk with me. But uh, we're going to bring him on in a second. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to do this interview. Uh, at, when was it? It was about um, it was end of the year, I think it was. and Or start of the year, I think it was. And uh, so things got in the way. You know, things happen. So we uh, cancelled it. We put it back uh, through to another time. <laughs> we'll talk about that too, what happened. and uh, But here we are. And um, we're, we're doing it now today. So kick back for the next couple of hours. I can see you're all throwing your emojis around. Good stuff. It's so weird not having a camera over here and I don't know where to look. So I'm looking at you all here today. All right, so let's bring you on. So not only is this my guest today in the studio with me, uh, a fantastic musician and somebody you've all grown to love, but he's a very dear friend of mine. And uh, when I started this channel, I'd already known him for years. So I think he was pretty much my first moderator here and possibly the worst because he uh, pocket banned nearly everybody who came into the chat by accident from work. But uh, he's an incredible artist, as we've all found out, even myself after knowing him for many, many years. And um, I didn't know he could sing. I just thought he was a gun guitarist, but here we are. And uh, as usual, guys, we'll say hello to you uh, at, at, after the next song that we play and do all that stuff. But anyway, I'll stop crabbing on. Let's bring him on. His name is Cold Acre. You'll know him as Cold Acre, but I know him as James Barclay. Let's bring him on right now. Get some applause going. There we go. Welcome to the show, James. How are you? Hi, Jade. How are you? I'm good. Let's do a full... We've got a wide view here. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're going good. Welcome. Thank you. You made it. I made it finally. How's your foot? No good. No good. So, no. folks, uh, <laughs> last night uh, he contacted me and said, my foot's fucked. I'm at the doctor's and I thought it's all happening again. It's it's all happening again. So what's happened to your foot? Um, it's called plantar fasciitis. It sounds like a carcass song. It does. It sounds pretty brutal, but it, it's, it is brutal. It's very painful. And what do they have to do? Uh, they're going to have to stick cortisone injections into it. Right. It's an inflammation of the heel and it just, yeah. Did you Have you got any photos? I think you sent me one, uh, didn't you? Oh, I might have. <laughs> a, a horrible x-ray. Should, should we scare everybody? Oh, you've sent me the, some photos there which I didn't uh, organise. Oh, there we go. Let's just use this one. This one will be fine enough. Now, there's, let's just show this one. Uh, for everybody, there you go. That, that'll make you all happy. Look at that. Uh, yeah, there he is. There's uh, Cold Acres foot in a bucket of ice. What's going through your mind in this photo, James? That's bloody cold. Yeah. Yeah. Looks. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, 15 minutes later, I can't feel anything. It's great. Right. Yeah. So when are you getting an, an injection? Oh, hopefully next week. Right. Yeah. You're looking hopefully. forward to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah, because steroids, they're fun. Yeah, they're cool. good stuff. Yeah. All right, well, um, so, and welcome to the studio. Thank you. It's um, awesome. Good to be here. Now, you're drinking from this. Why are you drinking from this cup well, today? Uh, happy birthday, Pete. I'm drinking out of a studio live today mug. Happy birthday, Peter Johns. Pete, uh, Pete would be uh, 45, uh, I guess. Uh, 83. 83, Actually, going on 83. His sensibilities are eighty three. He's about forty five in the in the in the physical sense. Happy birthday, Pete! Happy birthday! Cheers to you, Pete! Everybody, uh, happy birthday to Pete! I see Leela's here. Go back, Leela. We did a little tribute for the cake. And if you look in the uh, emojis, we've got a cold acre emoji today, and a cake emoji as well. There you go. Leela's already found it. Good on you, Leela. All right, so uh, we've done all that. We've done happy birthday jibber-jabber and all that shit. So let's get down to it. What does music mean to you? Music means everything. Um, music's my driving force in life. It's constantly in my mind um, and it's, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Why is it a driving force? It's just always there. I'm always thinking about it. 
It's always like, Even what am I going to do tonight when I get home? Should I work on this song? Should I play guitar? Should I contact this person and talk about this? Should I put this record on? It's just. Even when you're fucking. Yes, but don't tell them that. <laughs> you know who I'm looking at. <laughs> that took about two minutes to get lewd. <laughs> Um, so, uh, all right. So do you remember what uh, you come from a musical family, don't you? Yes. Your dad? Yeah. And mum? And mum? Yeah. yeah. So what yeah. do they do? Oh, well, dad is a guitarist. Um, he taught music and played in bands when he was young. Uh, and when I came along, he was still a musician for a living. Um, and mum is the same. Mum grew up. She can, you know, play guitar, piano, sing and all that. So it's a musical family and uh, musical instruments in the house. And It's interesting because, like, I've heard your dad play and your dad's like, he shits all over you. <laughs> he does. But it reminds me of the dynamic of Jeff Buckley and his dad. And it just does. Like, I, I'm, I've seen a video of, is that video on YouTube of you and him playing guitar together? No, it's not. Ah, see, I would have liked to play that one. Yeah, this I need to put some things up on YouTube of me and Dad, but yeah. that was on Facebook. I think I saw that. Yeah, it would have been Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So, how long's your dad been playing for? Has he been playing all his life? Yeah, yeah. He's the same. Started as a kid. There's photos for him when he's five holding a guitar. So, and yeah. like, did he uh, did he have any say in? Like, did he teach you or anything like that? Though? Yeah. Well, see, I've got a brother and a sister. When we all had our uh, birthday number six, we were all given acoustic guitars. Wow. And all taught to play. And, um, yeah, so everyone in the family is musical. So how do I get adopted into your family <laughs> and reverse back to six years old? Yeah. My dad gave me a clip around the ears when I was young. He <laughs> you told me deserved it. Well, I probably did. Yeah. I was probably a smart ass, but, you know, nothing's <laughs> changed. All right. Yeah. So, uh, we know, our music's uh, – so growing up in a house with, you know, family who, who play music, make music, uh, do you recall the music that was played in the house? What were – who were the artists – yeah, um, so mum and dad's record collection wasn't the best. It was pretty, you know, a lot of average stuff in there, but there was the occasional gem that um, you'd sift and find. Like? like? Oh, the, you know, Black Sabbath. All right. Um, a lot of guitar instrumental stuff, like Dwayne Eddy and The Shadows. That was the stuff that I sort of gravitated towards when I was small, was hearing the guitar as a, a vocal instrument, a lead instrument. Um. What else? Not a lot. It wasn't so much my parents' record collection that I was rifling through. It was my uncle's. He was the one with the okay. um, the eclectic taste. He had the Pink Floyd and the all, so the, Floyd, all the cool stuff. So did you just steal that shit? Yeah, um, absolutely. I I tape it all. I, when Tapes. he when he, when he was out, I'd run in there and find the bootleg and you know Pink Floyd live in nineteen seventy one and <laughs> go home with the cassette and listen to it obsessively when I was pretty young. So. What was the first metal album? Oh. Don't say Striper. Well, see, Bon, jo oh. no, no, bon, bon Jovi doesn't count, but it was a... It was Slippery When Wet. Is that was, what you got? Yeah, like that and then Poison and then yeah, Guns yeah. N' Roses and then yeah. Metallica. And Tiger Tales. Don't know who they are. <laughs> Is that a glam rock thing? Yeah, yeah of course okay. they are. They're, they're like a Poison clone. Yeah, okay. And should we have a look at them? Who are Tiger Tails? Let's let's have a look. Um, Ed B. Metal probably knows. I bet Ed B. Metal was a big fan of Tiger Tails. I don't even know if it was like a an S or, or a Z on the end. It's got to be a Z and a Y. Um, it's got to be. I'm just doing a, doing a quick search. Stick. Oh wow! Look at them. Geez, they look. Oh my God! Look at that. Let's uh, bring them up here. I'm sure I set up a new screen last night too, didn't I? It was this full screen. Where did I set that up? Oh, yeah. No, no, it's not. No, that's not it. <laughs> it's this one. Here we go. Um, oh, man, piss off. Oh, I've got an ad blocker on. It's not letting me look at it. All right, here we go. Denied. There we go. Tiger Tails. Look at that. Um, yes. Pretty. Yeah. Ed <laughs> B Metal says, I don't even know them. They must suck. <laughs> they look like they suck a lot, don't they? They look like they suck a lot of yep. things. Yeah. See, it was a Z, Tiger Tails. Yeah, yeah terrible band. But uh, it's it's so funny, like, 
when this kind of shit happened, mm. this kind of music happened, you had Boy George and all this stuff going on, mm-hmm. and it seemed like the world was a lot more of an accepting place. Yeah. What happened in the last 40 years for us to go so backwards? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a bizarre thing. Ed B. Metal says, I uh, bought a bunch of hot-looking chicks until you get them home into bed, Ed B. Metal, and then uh, surprise, surprise. Where are we? Um, so, uh, first, do you remember your first gig? Yeah. It would have <laughs> been Tommy Emmanuel that my dad took me to. Oh, wow. And this would be 89, 90. So, and he played at Rod Laver. He was actually. It wasn't called Rod Laver then, was it? No, it was just called the Tennis Centre. The Tennis Centre. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, That's a great stadium. Yeah. What about the Melbourne scene? Do you remember going to gigs? Yeah. Did you go to all age gigs when you were young? Um, I went to one. One. And then we were, so me and my mate in high school went to like an Arm and Angel, all of those classic bands, this band. Um, he's, got, I, he's got the necrotomy shirt on, <laughs> folks. Yes. So no, one, no one will have a clue You guys wouldn't is. have it, know who it is, but they fucking rock. Ed, you, they, you'd Get blow your it. socks off. Yeah. So we did one ages one all ages gig. This is my mate in high school. We we're about 14, 15. Yep. And then everyone at that gig said, "Are you going tonight?" We were like, "What's tonight?" Going, oh, it's, it's the same lineup, but it's adults. We're like, "Yeah, all right, let's go." <laughs> so we went. They let us in. And Where was that? Oh, that would have been probably at the the Sarah Sands or the Bell, corner or Bell, something like Bell that. Bell Street Rock. Something like that, probably. And um. Ever, like we were let in then, so we just kept going. We were going to adults gigs at 15. No worries. My first gig in Melbourne was an all-ages gig. Mm. It was in S- Sunshine on the back of a truck, Rancor, <laughs> PFA, SIC. Um, yep. Yeah, re- real. And, and I got thrown into a mosh and it was in a car park and there was all stones everywhere mm. at the back of the, the – a coal supermarket and I had cuts all over my knees and everything. And I got my first, uh, I did my first tape trade with Dave Destruction. Legend. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yes. Dave Destruction. And um, yeah, were you a tape trader? Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. That was how you network back then. Just um, buy, a, buy a demo off a band and then you just keep writing to them and then, you know, have you got this? Have you got that? And just sending tapes. So, You've yeah. got all your demos still too. I think I have most yeah, of mine I've, as I've well. I've got a lot of them. I've, I've got rid of a lot, unfortunately, but I've kept a good, you know, 50 tapes or whatever. So Yeah. Yeah, all the good ones. I think I've got necrotomy demos as well too. Yep. Have you got some? Yeah. I've got them both. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I've got both of them. Disembowelment? Uh, I haven't got that one. I've got it. Yeah, I really want that one. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> it's in a box in there right. in, in behind me. If it goes missing, it wasn't yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. It's all right. There's a mouse trap in there. So, uh, <laughs> Worth you won't, it. <laughs> you won't know. Hey, you all doing good out there? Uh, is, are we coming through loud and clear? Is this? Uh, uh, do you feel like we're ignoring you when we're talking to each other? Yeah, are we not looking at the camera? I know. Does well. It work? It's, it's, it's fascinating uh, not doing it like this uh, if I bring the camera over here. Uh, this would be around the right time now where I just mentioned as well, because we're doing things a little bit different today, that today's show is, of course, sponsored by our dear friends at DistroKid. Did you know that? Have you heard of DistroKid before? Well, let me tell you a little bit about DistroKid, shall we? Yeah, let me bring them up on the screen here. DistroKid are your one-stop shop for getting your music played out in all the streaming services, okay? And uh, you can save 7% off your first year by using my code, which you can see up in the t- corner there. It's in the description. It is uh, distrokid.com slash VIP slash Jade Star. You'll get 7% off. And amazingly enough, this is uh, my amazing moderator here, Thomas Christ, the legend himself, uh, has put the link there for you. And you will save... Uh, 7% off your first year. And it's very cheap to do so, as you can see here. $22.99 a year to release unlimited music uh, to all of the major streaming services. You get a Spotify check mark, you get unlimited lyric uploads, you get all that kind of stuff. Unlimited songs, albums, whatever you like. You get one artist for that price and uh, you also can split your royalties with other 
artists. So you may do a collaboration or something like that and uh, you'll be good. Plus, you get access to the mobile apps, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in the show. So, of course, as always, I want to do the thing. I, can't, I don't know if I can zoom in today. I think I can do a zoom like this. Oh, no, see, it's going to zoom in on my jammy. <laughs> There's my jammy. There's the, the photo that Dr. Zord has made for me. So we've got a few little things here on the desk. So thank you, Distro Kid. I mean, just to go here. Thank you, Distro <laughs> Thank you, Distro Kid. I love you, Distro Kid. <laughs> that was the weirdest ad ever. Uh, so yeah, we got some things here. So we got my jammy. We got this uh, little photo that Dr. Zord has made for me. This is a little uh, guitar in a box that Brad sent to me. And we got a few things up. Oh, we've got uh, we got the Gaviscon up here as well that uh, Gladys Worthington loves so much. Good. And of course, you've got to have on every table a uh, SM58. If you don't have an SM58, it's bad luck, and you should unalive yourself right now. Absolutely. I am a Distro Kid shareholder. All right. <laughs> but once again, thank you, Distro Kid, for sponsoring today's show. We love you, Distro Kid. All right, where are we? Uh, we're 23 minutes in. I can keep asking some questions. So, mm. so you, you, you get a guitar at six years old. Yeah. What kind of guitar was it? Oh, it was a three quarter size acoustic. I can't remember the brand name, oh, but they God. were all in, you know, in primary, primary schools, you'd see a wall of. Crappy cheap guitars. Yep. It was one of them. Was it nylon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what she said. And um, yeah. I had that for a long time. I actually threw it away only a couple of years ago. Oh wow. Yeah. Are you a hoarder? No. Oh, there you go. No. Only for guitars? Yeah, gear. Gear and vinyl and stuff like that. And vinyl. <laughs> and Records, the round ones. <laughs> right, right, records. Yeah. Um, so uh, now uh, I think a lot of people don't realise, or that maybe they do, I, I normally ask about school. Uh, was, was music a subject at school? Because here in Australia music was always a thing in all my schools. Did you do music at school? Yeah, I did. Um, I did it up till year 11 and then they decided they were going to get rid of it for the final year of high school, so I had to change schools to complete it which was a good thing because I went to a much better school and met musicians there. So, yeah. But school sucked. <laughs> school. Oh, yeah, elaborate. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> hang on, what, what happened at school? Oh, it's just a miserable place to be, isn't it? Did you get in trouble? Well, when I was there, yeah. What would, you, what, what, what would be something that you would do to get you in trouble oh, at school? Just attention-seeking Atten garbage, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Elaborate. Entertain oh. the people. Entertain the folks. There's there's 43 of them. <laughs> Give us a fucking story. <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I, right. I got everyone in the class to hum like this and the teacher would walk in and we'd all be... Oh, my God. <laughs> Who's doing that? We all are. <laughs> Did you draw cocks on the... on any? Oh. No. No, no, you didn't no, draw no. cocks at anywhere. Not, not at school. creative enough. Not no. creative enough. <laughs> we had a teacher once. This, uh, was, I'm sure, like folks in the audience, did if you had a substitute teacher, put it in the chat what you did to your substitute teacher. We had this one, this really old one, looked like Colonel Sanders, and he had this really shabby old op shop jacket with really deep pockets. And we'd come back from lunch every time we had him, and with food, and we'd put it in his pockets. <laughs> And you, and you knew every time he got home, he'd be like, how did a dim sim get in my pocket? <laughs> right. we, well, we had one teacher and his name was Mr. Holmes. Mr. No Holmes. No kidding. So, John. And he, he used to go right up to the chalkboard. So we'd get the chalk and just sort of cover the, the lip of the chalkboard and it was right where his groin was. And like two minutes into every lesson, he'd turn around and he'd just have this chalk mark right across where, you know where, Mr. Right. Holmes. <laughs> Well, and been, he never clued on. He just walked around with chalk on his willy all day. Right. Mr. Holmes yeah. uh, was found <laughs> unalived in his apartment, <laughs> hanging from the ceiling <laughs> with his note written on the wall in chalk. <laughs> Goodbye, cruel <laughs> world. <laughs> and a mark across his pants. That's right. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, did they have a, a – like for me, when I was at school, I went to Footscray C City Secondary College. We had a full-on music course where like yeah. you learnt songs, you went on tour, you played 
other schools. And yeah. Did you do that? Did Nothing you have anything like that? Like that? No, wow. No, not at all. Um, Where did you grow up in Melbourne? A bit of everywhere. Like I was born in Essendon. Essendon, yeah. right. And the first 12 years there. And then we were sort of moved around every couple of years. <laughs> right. Um, so I've lived pretty much On the run. Of, yeah, pretty much every part of Melbourne I'm familiar with. Did, did you get suspended at school? No. And I should have because I set fire to um, Mordialic <laughs> Creek once. I was. How do you set fire to a creek? So the smokers area um, was along Mordialic Creek. Right. And um, the grass was pretty long. So, you know, sitting there with a lighter. <laughs> and there's a nice little fire going and. Uh, then it's like, oh, it's time to put this out. So the three of us start stomping on it and we're like, we're not winning this battle here. Let's get the oh out of here. God. So it took off. 20 minutes later, right. hear the fire engines coming. And um, How do they go? I'm only doing that once. And, um, yeah, I got called in by the, the pri- <laughs> Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. The, by the principal Bob of the school. Bob called you in, yep. had a can. And, you know, guilty as, but they just, I just, oh. no, don't know, no, don't know. And, uh, yeah, that was lucky. Because yeah. the flames were pretty big. Yeah, lucky. So, yeah. so you nearly wiped out Morty yeah. Alec. Morty Alec. Yeah. And, uh, Morty Alec, folks. Uh, it's a nice. What, have you ever heard of a name called Morty Alec? We've got people uh, putting stuff in here. I would run down the halls during classes, open doors, and scream Ted Nugent songs at classes. You wouldn't do that these days, Bill, would you? <laughs> Ted's a. Anyone seen that picture of Ted Nugent sitting in front of all those dildos lately? <laughs> What's going on there? Um, <laughs> Why would one unalive oneself when there's a bunch of children? Well, you know, uh, children d- children are very mean people. I saw the outside of the classroom a lot, says Ed B. Well, I'm mm. not surprised by that. You are an absolute troublemaker. Uh, I also called the substitute teacher a bitch when I was 11. Wow. Unbelievable. You weirdo. Um, of course, poo-poo my diapers here because... Hi, a- Rhett. Hi, Rhett. <laughs> Uh, good stuff. We're going to play a song and then we'll come back and say hello to you all, yeah? So I don't know what I'm going to pick next, but I will pick one randomly. Let's do, let's go with, um, we'll go with this one. This is, uh, let me mute, make sure it's all muted. This is all new folks, so I do apologise if it looks a bit scrappy today. I've never really done a, a live interview like this. And, uh, oh, look, there's Laurie's Mishmosh. She was a perfect angel in school. Not buying that. (laughs) Bullshit. Uh, All right. So whatever. So this is uh, a track. You want to tell us about this track? Uh, Yes. This is a very, a very old song. Right. It's not as recent as you probably think. Well, I'd never Um, heard it before. So yeah. Yeah. No, I wrote it in 2007. Um, Just the old, you know, breakup song, Girls No Good. Time see, to move on. See, I thought it was more yeah, modern. But, no, but it came back right, somewhat recently. Um, but, yeah, it's one of the old songs that just kept coming around in my head and finally having the ability to record stuff these days means um, I can get a few of the old ones that are still kicking around out of the way. So, awesome. Yeah. You guys may know this one. It is uh, called uh, Someone Else. So let's uh, play it now. We'll be back here shortly. Let's. Oja.
Wicked track, huh? Good. Oh, thank you. A good track, man. I, thank you. I was really blown away when I heard it because I had no idea you could sing. Mm. How long have I known you for? Um, I think we like made contact in around 2015 or something like that. About that. Yep. And um, yeah, I because I just knew you as Filth, which we'll talk about. That's how we we kind of came together. I never knew you could sing. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I can sing a little. I can sing a little. <laughs> Let's do, say hello to everybody and then we'll come back we'll talk about that. All right. So, uh, guys, make it easy for me, right, because I'm so far away from the screen. I've got this little mouse here to try and do everything from. Uh, if you can just type something, anything, so I can call you all out. We'll do the hellos. So we've got Kim. Hello, Kim. We've got Laurie's Mishmash. We've got Kid Kane. Russ is in the house. Princess LDG, of course. Uh, Roque, Metalhead Hippie, thank you for the super chat I missed before. Jeff, thank you so much. Nice one, Hippie. It was cool to hang out with you last night, you big goof. Uh, Bill, hello, Bill. Welcome aboard. Bill made me this amazing thing. I'll show it on another show. He made me this beautiful star, and um, uh, it's amazing. I'll show it on another, another stream. But thank you, Bill, for that. Leela's in the house. Stu and Andy are both here from the the uh, that band that we've forgotten because it's been Thanks, so boys. long since they released something. I guilted them into coming. Yeah, good, yeah. good, good, good. So good day to both you. It's in Borthwick's in the house. We got uh, we got the son of Snake. We got the loose caboose, which <laughs> I know that is. Sounds like Yoko. <laughs> Sounds like Yoko. Trevor Bear, what's happening? Yes, I will ask him about his guitars. Um, who else? Ali's here. We got Hugh Caldwell, who was an angel at school. Uh, Lady Campion, hello. Jeff, boom, right on, good deal. Uh, Joey Gomes, hello to you. There's Leela. Who else? Uh, Thomas Christ. Falcon Blues, good day, good day, good day. Grego Sullivan, Pole Vault, what's happening? Uh, who else do I find? Doorways into music. Yeah, what's going on? The Mix Club, a.k.a. every nickname out there. Mr. Smith. 
<laughs> I can't do a close-up today. Probably a good thing. Joe Glenn, John Barry Glenn are here. Hope you guys are doing better. They haven't been too well lately. Uh, we've got Ali Strong here as well. Deep Gravity's in the house. God, so many of you. Thank you all for turning up for this bozo. Thanks, guys. It's awesome. I oh, know. See, people people that like you. See, stood me up last time, you prick. <laughs> Ed B Metal. Dick Grabby is here. Hi, Rhett. Hi, Rhett. Uh, or, <laughs> God, it's probably Ron Ward. Who knows? Audible Video's here. Is the hot water working? Oh, it came on this morning, finally. <laughs> Dude, it did not. You're a liar. Ru Russ is in the house. Hello, Russ. cold shower. It's horrible. You did not. You lie. You're a lying prick. Don't fuel him. Uh, Chem, what's happening, mate? Chem, okay. Mateus, good to see you. I think have I got most of you. Thank Heather. you. Good Feisty day. Feather. Heather. A poet, and I didn't know it. We've got Pam's in the house. Hello, Pam. Um... Um, uh, we've got, uh, got everyone there. I think I've got most of you. If I've missed you, just call me a, a Pookie, Pookie. How can I miss Pookie? She's perking and lurking. Perking and lurking. <laughs> perking and lurking. Pookie, good to see you. Love you, Pookie. And uh, I think that's nearly everybody. All right. We're good. Are we good? Yep. All right, we're good. Well, let's get on with the show. Um, so let me just get these comments off the screen. Mute. Your mic's still low, so you can still hear me cough. Damn. <laughs> that sucks. All right. So, um, influential bands. Yes. Who are some Who are some bands? Give us. Just, so many. Give us 10. <laughs> doesn't have Easy. to be. doesn't have to be exactly 10, oh. but you should be able to get a few out of that. Led Zeppelin. All right. Pink Floyd. Yeah. Dead Can Dance. Dead Can Dance. Carcass. Carcass. Jeff Buckley. Jeff Buckley. Tim Buckley. Tim Buckley. <laughs> Public Enemy. Public Enemy. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Of course. You're gay for them. Um, yeah. Oh, Augie March. Augie March. And, of course, Radiohead. Radiohead. Yep. Wow. Yep. No Necrotomy. Oh, look, I could name another 90 if you like. Christ bait. Yeah, all of it is influential because it's it, it all rubs off on you. Now, it's, it's interesting because now that I know, now that I hear your modern music, a lot of those influences make sense. Yeah. Like if I like I knew you're a big Chili Peppers fan, and we we don't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff. Red Hot is that what it's called? One Hot Minute. Yeah, yeah. Fucking worst album ever made. Yeah. You love that album? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's got some good, really good songs on it. Yeah. Just Dave, why Dave Navarro didn't work for me? Probably didn't, but that still resulted in some okay, okay songs. Did you see them when they played uh, on the Blood Sugar Sex Magic tour? Yes. And Eric. Yes, Eric Marshall. Yeah. It was at Festival Hall. Yep. He fucked up under the bridge. Yeah. He did good for a guy who'd been in the band for about two weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, two you weeks. Know? But he fucked up under the bridge. Oh, it was look. their number one song and yeah. everybody was there with their lighters yeah. and was like, dude, you can't fuck that. Oh, look. You can't. He did well under the pressure. He'd, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting him some slack. Come on. I got kissed by Anthony Kiedis yeah. at an after party. Lucky you. No. He stuck his tongue in my mouth. It was disgusting. He was a sexual predator. I'm not surprised at all. Really, really just gropy and horrible yeah. and just a vile, insipid mm. human being. And he sounded like Kermit the Frog, so it was mm. very creepy. Yeah, not surprised. So would you want to be kissed by uh, Anthony Kiedis? Sure. Where? Anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what a story to tell. I'll be I'll be telling you about it now. <laughs> I, I, was, I was hoping there was one deep, deep in your psyche. Because this is therapy, right? Okay. I'm trying to bring out the memories, the the deep, dark memories. Well, of... I haven't been tongue-kissed by any celebrities, unfortunately. Okay. So there's nothing okay. really to so... – <laughs> nothing there. So influential bands and um, – so when did you, like, start taking guitar seriously? Was, it, was there a time when you just was like, all right, I'm, I'm just – I've been given one – my, my family plays, well, but now I, I want to. I was go from pretty much the start. I was playing for hours every day. I on that little nylon acoustic. Yep. And yeah, I just I've always taken it seriously. Um, it's always been sort of the thing that I want to do. Um, yeah, I can't ever remember not it not being something that I took as serious. You know. How often do you play guitar? These days, yeah, not that often. Really? No, hardly at all. I'll go through. I'll go through phases where, like right now, I'm. I haven't touched it in weeks. 
And wow. Because I'm so excited to be messing around with logic and that side of it, the door and that is, is really what fires me up at the moment. But it sort of it goes up and down. In, yep. a few, in a few months' time, I'll go out and buy a guitar pedal and be like, yeah, and then just play every day for three months. Because you're not using like uh, – you're not using software. For you You have an old school pedal board. Yep. You're, you're old school as fuck. Yep. Is there a particular reason for that? Yeah, I just find that because I've spent so many years and so much money building it up. <laughs> right. And it's now my sound. Yep. It's like it all works together and um, – I just think it sounds better than anything that I've heard inside a door. Yep. For me. Yep. Um, I love my pedals. I just love them. What's your favourite pedal oh. for the for people at home? Yeah, yeah. We'll get there, Hugh. I'm, look at Hugh and, and Tremor Bear. <laughs> they're like fucking edging. The, so, the, the two edge lords. They're like but guitars, guitars, guitars. <laughs> oh, I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. I'm pretty partial to the Phase Ninety. The Phase 90. The, the MXR Phase 90. I've got an old not one from the mid-70s. It's older than me. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's just that, that sound. It's, um, every time you open a door and open it phased and you'll notice they're orange, that's why. Right, They're right, all right. modelled on that. All right, so let's get to guitars because people are right. <laughs> I'm getting called a cock blocker now. <laughs> <laughs> Red, you are so weird. All right, rattle off. Tell them. Look down the camera. Make them feel good. <laughs> Tell them what guitars, guitars. you own. Let them all oh, come in their pants. Uh, uh, just all the standards, like a Les Paul, a Strat, Telecaster, Jazzmaster, uh, six-string acoustic, 12-string acoustic, bass. Uh, I got rid of my shredder. used to have an Ibanez RG, but, yeah, that's all. I've only got six or seven. I think I've got more guitars than you. You would. Yeah. One, two, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You win. And there's there's two more somewhere. Oh, there's one downstairs in a case. A, I've sent you a picture of my my, oh, yeah, my let's, favorite let's, three. Let's do that. I didn't save them. Oh. All the photos to show you show the foot. <laughs> Hang on, where are they? Uh, oh, didn't I? No, you didn't send oh, them. Oh, never mind. Oh, uh, here we go. Look oh, at this. Here we go. No. Oh. <laughs> oh yes. Okay. What's happening there? Oh, dear. <laughs> it's the 90s, all right? Go easy. That's a horrid-looking guitar, isn't it? <laughs> look at it. You look happy. Yeah. Was this... A... <laughs> was... <laughs> well, what... <laughs> You've got to send me some other photos. What's going on okay. here? Okay. Yep. That's um, the shaved head years. Is that shaved? Good God, look at you there. Yeah. What was going on? Next thing you had to tell me, you're taking photos of yourself in a bathtub naked as a one man de- black metal band. <laughs> Never got that bad. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, which band was this? That's Sleight of Hand. Is that it? It looks. I thought that was at the art house. No, that's at Bondi's Barn. Bondi's Barn in. Uh, is it Ringwood or Croydon? It's. It's. Um. I know. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow! Look at this Bondi's. Yeah. Eye view. <laughs> yeah. He's looking down on us, oh, and there's a shark. <laughs> Wow. Lots of venues used to do this in Melbourne, have art yeah. on the walls. The yeah. Art house used to do it yeah. and they're gone. Oh, the art. oh, God, what is going on here? <laughs> what is this shit? Why did you send me this? I'm, I'm really not into uh, porn. I just found some on Facebook. Look at that little kid, everybody. Look at how happy that kid is there. Was he you two? I've, st- <laughs> I've still got that T-shirt and it's <laughs> not much of it's left. The U2 t- what do you use the U2 T-shirt for these days? No. <laughs> it sits in the drawer. Right, right. <laughs> Where's this? What's going on here? Uh, that's recording our first demo. Right. Uh, you do look like Lord Vacuum in that. Yeah, well, yeah. I would have been hanging out with him then, maybe around then. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, that's um, high school. Oh, wow. Um, that chap behind me, is that the other metalhead in the school that I used to go to gigs with? There's one yeah. other metalhead. That was it. There was just the right. two of us, yeah. Right. Yeah. Fuck, how depressing. Yeah. Did you get punched up at school for being a metalhead or people just try to intimidate you? Yes, I did. and I did, yeah. It was a fuck weird times. It was. Oops. 
Like liking metal is a. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's the first guitar. There you go. Yep. Um. Look at you there. Yeah. <laughs> Did every kid in Australia at that age have a one of those T-shirts? Yes. Absolutely. And and is that corduroy pants? The corduroy pants. Yeah. But it's a good look. <laughs> oh, Aussie kids, all corduroy pants, yep. bright yellow, green T-shirts. Yeah. Fucking, it was the way. So uh, let's go back to, we'll come back over here. What's going on, uh, uh, G-Mac? So, um, yeah, school, interesting, because as soon as I started listening, when I, before I listened to metal, it was like, yeah, you're one, you're just another kid. And then I was, straight away, as soon as I got into metal, it was like, you're different and we're going to punch you for it. And people, I remember at school, there were dudes who just walked past and just go, fucking metalhead, and just punch me in the arm. And yeah. I'd go like, yep. why? Yeah. Like, I got bullied in the same way for like every day for a year from this one bloke. And um, it wasn't a guy. No, it wasn't a guy. He was a bloke. And then weirdly, I was in the music room playing guitar one day and he came in and he's like, oh, wow. And then he became my best mate. Yeah, of course. It always can you happens. play this? Yeah. Yeah, I can play that riff. <gasps> and then he would, and he followed me around. I was like, dude, you bullied me for a year. I had nightmares because of you. Now you like me. Yeah. And the same thing happened to me. Like, so all the way through school, it was like, oh, you're the metalhead. You're the metalhead. But we like you because you can sing and you're funny. And then as soon as school ended, year 12 ends, you're walking down the street, mm. all those people who bullied you, they walk past you, they're wearing a fucking Slayer T-shirt. Right. Yep. And they it's like, on. you're only 10 years too late, dick brain. Yep. But like, and then that's, you, but you don't want to like turn around and go, what's their first album, dickhead? Yeah. Because <laughs> you know they're not going to know. That's right. You know? Uh, what do you do? What do you do? Hey, look, um, it's, it's it gets metal on the map, and you know it makes it more popular, and then we end up with new metal. Do you like new metal? Each to their own, Jade. I'm not going to bag a oh, genre. I'm not. I, I it's remember, horrible, isn't it? I went to a funeral that Roadrunner <laughs> held for new metal. Yeah, I told you about it. Yeah. We went to a funeral. Roadrunner Records. They they held a funeral. Um, they they invited all the Melbourne metalheads along to this event, and we thought, oh. It's going to be a new album they're going to release. And they end up putting in a soul on a bus and they drove us out to the sticks out to this church. And we're like, what the hell's going on? There's everyone from the Melbourne metal scene. And it, there was a church and they fully came out and they held a funeral for new metal and they had a coffin and they put a turntable in there, <laughs> shorts, baggy shorts. And then they, <laughs> they had pallbearers and they carried the coffin out and they dropped it in a hole. And they were like, goodbye, new metal. Roadrunner Records says no to new metal. And then we went back to the to their um, office and they announced their new album that they were, all this was for a promotion. Kill Switch Engaged. Fucking new metal, <laughs> in my opinion. And everybody took all the beers that they'd supplied and fucked off yep. and let the album <laughs> play. They hadn't even got it to the third song and everybody had left. Yep. New metal. Yeah. Fucking, there you go. Um all right, so let's talk metal. We are talking metal. Gigs. When did you start playing in a band? First band. Oh, first band would have been when I was uh, about 12. Um, 12? Two, two other people in church. So I was, um, we just decided to um, do a gig. Right. At the church hall. Yeah. You know, three songs. Do you and, side? Um, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. I can't even remember what the songs were. Were they churchy songs? Oh, they oh, they were a cover of some Christian band, but I can't right. even remember the name of them or the songs. But I do remember breaking a string on the first song and like holding back tears for the other two, and then going oh, home and crying. The tears. Yep. Yeah, because you know couldn't oh. play my solo properly, <laughs> which is the end of the world when you're twelve. It is. Why didn't you have a spare guitar at 12 years old? Yeah, why? Or, or a why, roadie? Dad? <laughs> or, yeah, where was your roadie? <laughs> what's, what's going on? So was that an ongoing thing, playing the church? Uh, no. No? No. I stopped going. And then after that? Uh, high school. Yeah? Yeah, high school bands. Um, Covers, trying to write yes. originals? Uh, yeah, bit, look, trying to do both. Yep. We, put, we tried to do, like, Pearl Jam and Soundgarden were the bands of the... Really? Yeah, era. they were. They were. And we made the singer try and sing Soundgarden songs, the poor bloke, and he'd blow his voice out in the first song every time. Right. But, um, 
Yeah. What year was this around? Oh, 93, 92, 93. Shit, I was in Despised at that point. Yep. And um, Gigan playing yep. the Sarah Sands. Yep. Bell Street Rock and yep. all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, we, we both uh, were in the same scene, but we never crossed paths for. We did once. So, <sighs> once. Remind me. Uh, at the Filth Gig. Oh, the one and only Filth Gig. Yes. Right, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, that I was, was a, funny. I was a very different person then. You too. were. You, you weren't wearing a shirt. No, no. Uh, yeah, I wasn't wearing a shirt, so uh, I was exposed. <laughs> you were. I was exposed. Do I have a – I think I, I have that in here because we just did that uh, show last week. Let's see, favourites. <laughs> I'll, I'll avert my gaze. Fucking Brad. I was Brad. Yeah. Ugh, okay. Sorry, I don't mean uh, like that, but um, sorry, Brad. I can't, I can't even find it. It's, it's got to be somewhere in here. No, I can't find it. But yeah. it, it was it was the photo that we showed the other day. Yeah. Um, now you just finished playing your set, and yep. I was friends with the singer, and he called me up on stage. He was proud as punch. It was his first gig, He's and, a I, and he introduced me to everyone. Fuckhead. And. I said good day to everyone. I said good day to you. And just as you sort of looked up to a bet to say good day back, these people started abusing you for wearing black metal makeup. Oh, right. And started shouting at you. Yeah. And you just kind of like gave them a mouthful back. And I was like, I'm just not going to bother yeah, asking could... this person who's copying shit. Yeah, because I, lo- I love it. Uh, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Camp Gmay, for the super chat. And uh, yes, the, the jammy. This is. Yeah, well, you know, I I did wear, like to wear corpse paint because like it was a fuck you. Yeah, because it was huge at the time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, corpse like, paint was corpse yeah. paint was everywhere. Yeah. Um, let's play another song, and then we'll come back. And we'll talk about filth. What are we? Eight fifty five here in the morning. Everybody doing okay out there? You're all good. Everyone okay? The we're rocking out. Everyone's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's play another song from our friend here, our guest, Cold Acre, aka James. Barclay, I'm going to play, um, we're going to play The Diamond Sea. Tell us about this song. Um, this is written well, last year. Yep. Uh, it was a song that I collaborated with Leela. Um, she came up with the the sort of this, the beat and the sort of the motif that runs through it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I built something around it and, um, yeah, we collaborated and... It's uh, the first thing that I sang on that we did together. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys, you ready? We're going to play this uh, track. This is called A Diamond Seed by Chill Zone, which is Cold Acre and Dark Leela. Let's do it right now. We'll see you back here in a moment. Oh, yeah. Boom. Yeah, let's do it. Got all the right buttons. Yeah, let's rock. Yeah. 
found my little one Swimming in the diamond sea Only her Turn on your mic, don't I? Bring you back. There you go. There we are. We're both back. Hey, wicked song, man. Thank you. Tell us about how you got in collaboration with uh, Leela. Um, I think I just asked her if she wanted to collaborate. <laughs> right, but ha- ha- all right. So that I think I can't remember. And, um, and how's the songwriting process happened between you and Leela? Well, she. Instigates most of it. Um, she's usually yeah, got a wealth she, of. She is an instigator. She's got a wealth of like jams and yep. things that are just sitting there. Um, and a lot of the time, just on her show, for example, the one that we're working on now or about to work on was just um, during one of her live streams. I was like, send me that. Just the end of your show, there's like a two minute thing. So she sent me the last 10 minutes and then I'll just sort of pull it, pull out the audio and start. Recording over it, send it back, and off, we're off again. Is it an easy process? Do you like yeah. argue or anything like that? No, it's it's effortless. It's great. Um, it's the complete opposite to standing in a room with three other guys, <laughs> micromanaging what everyone's doing and paying fifty bucks a yeah, week yeah. to do it to, to argue. <laughs> so I think the great thing with the online collaboration is if you if you want to work with someone, you kind of ex- you just have to accept that what they do is is okay. Yep, and let them do it. Yep. Rather than say, it's all right, but can you just change this? Like, I don't, that's just a head. What, like what's it. the average turnover? How long would it take for you to, guys to get, you don't rush or anything like that. You just take a nice and chill, chill oh, zone. Yeah, look, I, I'm really slow. Because I rushed out my first song and wasn't happy with it, I thought I'm going to take my time here. So it, we take a few months. Um, there's no hurry for it. It's just, and she's got her own solo stuff. I do solo stuff. So, yeah, just when... So feel you, like it. I like that. I mm. like when it, people take more time to finish songs yeah. because, yeah. you know, you can rush stuff out and, you know, yeah. uh, you end up with it can be a little bit better. Mm. And, um, you know, w- w- it, it's interesting with, with this community we have here. We have so many shows that play people's songs every week that sometimes it feels like you, you need to have something new out all the time. Yeah. To fill up the content of all the people who are playing shows. Yeah. I don't think like that. I think mm. I, I work on my own schedule. Yeah. And if I eventually get a fucking song out, then it's it's done. Yeah. Um, do you micromanage your own stuff? Like do you swat over like, you know, EQ and all that kind of stuff or are you pretty go with the flow? Uh, with with writing and recording, I do that really fast. Yep. Um, I don't mind – mistakes in there because i think that's a bit of character in there absolutely but once i've got all the music laid down the tracking and that i'll spend ages and ages and ages mixing it just i'll go overboard and just spend multiple yeah listening to it on different formats yep yep and then just live with live with it for a couple of weeks and then go you know what after this amount of time's passed that drum 
but it could come up a bit and then just tweak it. Yeah. To the point where I can no longer do anything to it, then I know it's then it's it's cooked, it's ready. Yeah. Get it out and there. then move it on. Get, yeah. Get it out there so you're not stressing over it anymore. Yep. All right, let's uh, – we're, we're up to – so we're up to our midway point. I need to mention again our sponsor for the show. So everybody uh, – and thank you all for being here today. There's, I think, Naya. Thanks, everyone. Here. It's really awesome. Hi, Naya. Who else have I missed? If uh, Les, welcome aboard. Lily Pillies Manny is here. Forrester the Wolf, welcome aboard as well. Syafin, uh, another name. We've seen there join late to the stream. Lady Campion, ma, 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 ma. hello to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what have we got? 40 of you kind souls hanging out. Let's mention again today's sponsor because we have to do so. And I'm gonna we're going to have a bit of a fun with one of my songs or a couple of my songs and see what it says about my songs. So as usual, today's show is sponsored by, let me bring up the right thing. Edit. Oh, that's the wrong one. It's this one here. Distro Kid are our sponsor today. DistroKid, let me tell you about these guys. They are amazing. They have been sponsoring my show for a long time now, and I'm ever so grateful. And they give us, us creators, us musicians, the ability to release music at a very, very low price of $22.99 annually. And if you sign up using my code, which our amazing mod Thomas has just put in there, at distrokid.com slash VIP slash Jade Star, you too can release all your stuff to uh, Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, um, all of them, all the places, so many that it'll blow your mind. You get 7% off the first year if you use my thingamajig there and it helps me, it helps DistroKid, it helps everybody and it helps you get your music out. So that is the basic plan there. You can see that first one here, 22. You can also, there's other plants here for 39, uh, where you get two artists. The other one here is 89, and you get about, uh, what is it, five artists? That's what I have. And uh, there you go. Let me show you something interesting with DistroKid here. So I'm going to click over here to this thing, because when you click up the top here, you get a whole bunch of interesting things you can do. Uh, to promote yourself. And one of them here, I think, is it special access? Let me see. Special access. No, that's not the one. Is it promote yourself? No. Get heard now. I can't even remember. <laughs> Enhance your music. Here it is. See this? It's called Dave, our AI music analyst. I always forget this thing's here. So what happens with this? You come over here. You can pick one of your songs, and Dave, the brain with headphones on, will give you a... Uh, an anal analytical uh, relay of one of your songs. Let's choose Ask Maggot by FMC <laughs> and see what Dave, the brain with headphones. So you click here and, he, oh, there we go. So, hi, I'm Dave, Distro Kids AI bot. Let me tell you about Ask Maggot by FMC. <laughs> Ask Maggot is a one minute, 51 second long, and it's in the key of A major. Wow. Uh, and the time signature is four beats per measure. Loudness is minus 13.48 dB. Great. I don't know it's what that is. Uh, the tempo is 120. So it gives you all this information. Acousticness, 9%. This track isn't uh, acoustic at all. Danceability, 85%. This is good for dancing. Ass maggot. Okay. Instrumental, that's 72% likely an instrumental. Energy, 55%. Speed. What's the speechiness, though, speechiness. Jay? Speechiness. Probably doesn't contain talking, but it does contain. Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have any talking. Liveliness, 10%. So there you go. And you get to, and if we do analyze another song, let's analyze one more song, then we'll move on. What about. <laughs> oh, man. This... We'll do another FMC song, of course. Uh, what about horse racing is for fuckwits? Um, let's see. What about lepileptic? So this is a, another FMC song, Lepileptic. It's about people with leprosy and they have epilepsy at the same time. So let's uh, get this. So it says uh, Lepileptic is one minute, 35 minute, key, key of E major, uh, four beats per measure, uh, tempo is 84.76, no acousticness, 31% danceability, likely an instrumental. Uh, it's got vocals in there. <laughs> the vocals are so guttural. It hasn't picked them up. But, yes, you can get a little bit of info. This is just another little tasty thing that DistroKid puts 
in their service that you can mess around with, yeah? So I, I love that kind of stuff. So let's come back over here. So thank you, DistroKid, once again for sponsoring this uh, channel for so many things and uh, and for providing such a good service for people to release the, your music. Boom. Let's talk about filth. Okay. So <laughs> back in, in the... In general or the... Well, back in the day, I, when I was a youngster, I started a band called Filth, everybody, which was FMC before um, some shit went down. And it was a joke band. It wasn't meant to be serious. Uh, in one night, I wrote an entire demo, stoned off my tits, called um, I Can't See. Yep. And um, I, I was living in a house with a bunch of friends and we put together these songs. But the idea was everybody who were, was in the band had to play an instrument that we weren't familiar with. And because I was a vocalist, I played guitar. Then yep. we got a friend on vocals who'd never sung before. We had our guitarist from another band play drums yep. and Adam Glynn, he was a vocalist who played bass. And we all made up stupid names for ourselves and we went and recorded a demo and we did one gig yep. and then I left the band, even though it was my band, I started the whole band. And yep. then you joined the band. I did. I got asked You replaced to join. me. Yes. I had to um I had to learn all the songs and uh <laughs> You know, the demo tape goes for 12 minutes and yeah. about half of it's Simpsons samples. So yeah. there's a tidy five minutes of music to learn. Um, but I got there. And you had to fill my shoes. Yeah. So my name in the band was Rita the Excreta Eater or D. Yeah. What was your name in the band? Gothmog. Ace Gothmog. Gothmog. <laughs> yeah, because Gothmog was a fictitious black metal band that had their own cartoon strip. Right. So And they took the piss out of black metal, so I was quite... Happy with that. Now, I left in the band because the guy in the band was a twat who I got to sing. And he, he used to be a friend and then I just thought, you're a twat. I don't want to be around you anymore. And everybody around kind of thought he was a twat as well. Yeah. So that's why I left. And I was really sick and I moved to Sydney to get some treatment. That's a whole other story. Yeah. But when you joined, you were fed a whole bunch of bullshit about me, weren't you? Yeah. That I was evil. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of it was true, but no, <laughs> of course not. Um, so how long were you in Filth for? Oh, not long, maybe nine months. But you did gigs, didn't you? No. No? No, no, no. You never did any gigs? No. Because no. Filth I, I wasn't in hasn't for that done long. a lot of gigs, has it? No, I don't think they did start a gig for like years after that. Yeah. So, folks, Filth is still together right now. No, they're not. Well, but, but, <laughs> but he likes to think they're still together. Okay, yeah. All right. He, he thinks they're, they're still together. And he's, he, this dude doesn't like me still because, like, I started FMC and was playing the same songs, some of the same songs that were on that Filth demo tape. Right. We've got a bit of Filth here to play. Yep. So basically, yeah, we recorded this demo tape. It goes for 12 minutes. It's got what? Is it 11 songs. 11 songs? Yeah. So you can find this on YouTube. Let me just show you guys. So someone's uploaded it to YouTube. I'll play the first song. Here it is here. All right, we can go this screen so you can still see us. This is filth, and this is the f so the demo is called Clitoral Vision, of course. And uh, yeah, see that uh, emoji Leela's putting up there? That's the guy in the band that we both hate. <laughs> we just we just thought we'd put his emoji up there to be, to be cunts. All right, so let's play the first song. It's called Janicor. Let's go. I'll get some sound. Listen, a heavy. Understood. Let me see. But I repeat. 
it's an extreme form of art and uh, it's not meant to be so very much common. It's certainly an extreme form of art. You see, you, you touched on a point there that somebody else might like to pick up. Is it reflecting what you're thinking? Everything's set. There we go. Anyway, so that, that's a bit of filth. So you can find this online if you really uh, want to track it down. Just type in filth clitoral vision. I don't know if you can still buy it. It was a cassette tape. Mm. But, um, yeah, th so this band essentially became FMC. But the, the funny thing was I didn't know James at all. And um, no. 2000, it was around 2015. I yep. think you contacted me maybe. Yes, I did. And we're like, hey. Well, I, I don't know how I, why I can't, well. I think I must have seen you commenting on another musician's Facebook. On Facebook, yeah. Someone yeah. just got clicked on and gone, oh, a transgender person. I wonder who this is, you know, because yep. me having no exposure to any of that. Yep. I've never known anyone trans before. Yeah. So it was like, oh. So I click on your page and there's, oh, part of the death metal thing. And I'm like, strange, never heard of this person before. So I did some digging, <laughs> dug deep and went, oh, okay, pre-transition, right, got it. Oh, that band, the band I was in. Yeah. So, I, hey, nice to meet you. By the way, I've joined the band and played all your stuff and we started talking and off we went. And then we shared war stories about dick brain. Yeah. And, uh, yep. yeah. Oh, there was a few dick brains around back then, wasn't there? Well, there, there were, weren't there? Um, yeah. But, you know, um, so it, it, it's turned out really good because, you know, as you said, we crossed paths once before, but now yep. here we are. All these years, and 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 we've become like really good mates, you know. Can you stop touching my foot under the table? Was oh, that you? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's, I thought it was the table. It's weird. All right. it's, it's like it's been happening. You all said the nothing way. for the last hour. I'm, I'm gonna need a beer. <laughs> <laughs> so James isn't having a beer with me today. Not yet. Right? Not yet. Not yet. So, uh, but I'm gonna have a beer. It's nine in the morning. It's nine in the morning, and I'm gonna have a beer. All right. So cheers. Cheers. Perfect water, beer. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about that. Are you okay to talk about this? Mm -hmm. We won't go deep. Mm -hmm. So when you were going to come here for the interview last time, yep. and I didn't make a scene about it here on the channel, yep. but you, you didn't come out, right? Yep. And what, what was going on? Tell us, without going too deep. Um, just exhaustion. Mm -hmm. um, anxiety. I had a, didn't have a great year last year. Yep. Um, Break up and just just down, just down mentally and not look not taking care of myself. Yeah, and just yeah, not when you don't look after yourself, um, then you struggle just to just to do normal things. Yep, such as travel, jump on a train and travel for two or three hours. You know, it just seems like this mammoth thing that yeah yeah, there's too much to do. Yeah, and um, so I needed to you know refresh the batteries and start eating well and just. Yeah, looking after myself. Make a change. And you've done yep. so. Yeah. And that's really awesome. Yep. So congratulations yeah. on making changes to your yep. life. Yep. Because, you know, you're here now. Yep. And, you know, uh, I, I was angry. But, of course, I understand. Yeah. Because being somebody who's found it, and I'm sure people here in the chat as well uh, understand, sometimes just leaving the fucking house yep. is a really hard thing to do. Yeah. Even if it's something you really want to go and do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that makes it even harder because... You, you weigh up what's what's worse. It's like letting down a friend or the thought of having to travel for three hours and be anxious the whole way. It's like, yep. you know, that's that's winning at the moment. So, yep. so that's how it is. And, you know, as soon as we chatted and stuff and, and you know, I worked out that you needed some self-care, yep. well, fuck, do that. Yep. An, an interview can be done at any time, you know. Yep. So here we are now doing it and uh, we're in a much better place yep. except your foot's fucked. <laughs> Yeah, well, what can you do? That's life, isn't it? It is. It throws things at you. It is, but you, you got to look up. And I got that exercising, you know, running, looking after myself, trying, yeah. to, trying to get fit. Yeah, because <laughs> <So>. meanwhile, <laughs> well, I remember when we were first hanging out, you were running all the time. Yeah, yep. And I was just putting on all this weight. Yeah. And then, and now recently, I'm the one who's been burning all the weight. That's right. And you're putting it back on and That's now right. you're going to have to, it's yep. up and down. It is up and down. But um, I love running. So as soon as the foot's good, I'm off again. How, have you? Because you stopped for a bit, didn't you? Yeah, I didn't do much of it last year. Yep. Yep. But um, yeah, I started again in 
beginning of this. How far do you run? Oh, um, three to three to five k. But when I'm really fit, I'll do six or seven. Yeah. But it's more like I'd rather I want an intense half an hour because that's sort of you know with the work you with the work schedule. You got to catch up with me doing thirteen eight kilometers. Your leisurely strolls, yes. Oh, yeah, sorry, yes. I'm walking. Sorry. Well, I'm uphill. Yeah, but I was doing 20K <laughs> walks as well with yeah. amongst all those right, runs. 20K, all right. So, all right. yeah, that was good, great fun. But it's all about time when you've got to work 10 hours a day. Yep. You've got a window of half an hour before work or after work. Of course, of course, you've got to fit in where you can. Yeah, so running's great for that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm a, a great advocate for getting fit. Because, uh, you know, I put on a lot of weight and now I've lost 20 kilos. Probably doesn't show here on the camera. You get to see my fat neck. This is a terrible angle. Yeah, it is. It's not a good angle, is I it? You get the... Uh... fucking hate this angle. Yeah. I fucking hate this angle. Let me <laughs> tell you that. This angle is so much better. You get to see me front on and I don't look so revolting. But here we here we are doing these. I'd like to do more of these interviews. You should. Is this, is this what you thought it would be? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is. I us th- playing footsies under a desk. I didn't think it was going to be this. Thanks for re- reciprocating finally. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't me. I think oh, there's someone else. No. <laughs> that was that other bitch that I've got under the floorboards. Let's play another song. Yes. I- I'm going to play uh, Fallen Into You. All right. Tell us about it. Uh, it's a song, it's a song. <laughs> about falling in love. Right. Novel, novel concept for a song. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> falling. Yeah, it's about true. falling in love, everybody. Yep. Who here has fallen in love? Uh, who's had their heart broken? Me. Who hasn't? Yeah, who hasn't? We'll talk about that next. All right, let's play the song. You ready, guys? This is uh, Falling Into You by Cold Acre. Let's oh, jo- yeah. Boom.
Boom! So that was falling into you. Now that's unlisted, that track, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's not really complete. Um, there's a whole different ending written. I've just got to record it. It's like I was saying off camera. Um, it, when we when we started talking stuff, I was like thinking, why why would you be into my Dread Circus music or any of the other mellow stuff? Because you know we know each other kind of through metal and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just it's so strange because I didn't know you played this kind of stuff as well. I think I started to get an idea when you started to send me music for the movie I'm making, for the utensils, right. and I heard that guitar that you did for yeah, that. that's right, yep. And um, it's just been so um, uplifting for me to know that you are this, have this beautiful voice and Thank write you. these beautiful songs. And it's, yeah, so, I mean... Uh, is, what's it like for you to break away from this metal thing and, and, and do this stuff? Well, I, I broke away from it 25 years ago. Right. Like I haven't played in a metal band since the 90s and that sleight of hand band from 2001 was was nothing, yeah, it's this kind of music. So yep. it's just the out the outside appearance. You're still a crusty old stinky metal head exactly. like me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So people go, oh, we must only play metal. But no, it's so did, much great music. Did you get told like when you were younger it's like, You'll stop wearing those metal shirts one day and... and yeah, you'll grow out of it. it no, Mum. <laughs> it doesn't happen, does it? Sorry, Mum. Like, you know, I remember going, nah, nah, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But it hasn't been a conscious thing mm. where I've gone like, no, no, I'm going to make sure I wear these metal shirts forever. It, yeah. it, it's it's a thing. When, once you, when you're in the metal club, you're in the metal club. That's right. I tried to break away from that metal club for a while and I did. You said, saw the shaved head and all that I ventured into rust territory and did the doof doof thing for a while. But um, <laughs> doof, doof. all it took was one metal gig and I was like, nah, this is where I belong. This is my home. This is my homies. Homies. Yeah. Here's one of your homies here. She's back. Yep. Yes, she sure, sure is. G'day, Loz. Loza. Loza. Show us your legs, Loza. Anyway, what am I saying? So you're in a couple of other bands. Sleight of Hand. Yes. Tell us about Sleight of Hand. That was me and my uh, co-worker buddy, uh, Ross, he's a great singer, songwriter. Um, he asked me to come along and jam. They had a, a four-piece band and um, with one guitarist. And I thought, yeah, I'll be second guitarist. So mm -hmm. came along and did that with, with them for a while and that was great. That was um, playing the smaller pubs in the Brunswick area. So, What kind of music? How would you describe it? Oh, alternative rock is the... Category, but that's a pretty broad oh, thing. What, what about a band that's similar, oh, or a couple of bands that kind of make sense around? Powderfinger, Powderfinger, yeah, um, Pearl Jam, just yeah, that kind of thing. Just guitar driven. It's so weird hearing you say Pearl Jam because yeah, I don't like Pearl I, Jam. But I fought against Pearl Jam. They were yeah omnipresent, so you couldn't really get away from it. Yeah, I, when I was in, in my band, Despised. We were our music was like Mr. Bungle and Primus and all that, but yeah. we had a guitarist who just got so into Pearl Jam. Yeah, and fuck me, we were so over it. We'd just be like, dude, we can't understand what that can't sing. Yeah, yeah, mumbles. So yeah. he's mumble, mumble McMumbleson. Yep. But over time, Pearl Jam started to resonate. Yep. It wasn't until I got into Mother Love Bone. Yep. And I went back and, and got into Mother Love Bone and then went, ah, yep. Andy, this is the real Pearl Jam and Eddie Vedder's like the fucking yeah, replacement yeah. that yeah. just mumbles now. Yeah. Well, Soundgarden were huge for me. I yep. adore them. Yep. But they're very hard to copy because they play the time signatures and that. And Chris but, Cornell's just. Yeah, they've got a singer gone. and a drummer who you just can't replicate either of them. So Absolutely. It. Yeah. So you, you, how long are you in Slide of Hand for? Oh, about three years. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, we did it for about three years. A lot years. of gigs? Yeah, yeah, probably 10 to 20. Demos? So, yeah, two recordings. We did proper well, – I got a reel-to-reel -reel of their second demo, which is great. Where, where can people hear that? Are you going to put that out somewhere? It's never, I've ne it's never occurred to me to do that because um, the band's not going, so. Marketing, folks. <laughs> or lack thereof. Yeah. Plus, I wouldn't want to do it without talking to the other guys first. And I, of course. And I don't really, I've only got contact with the singer still. I don't know what the other guys are up to. Ah, uh, when you're in that situation, fuck them. Right. Okay. No. Not literally. Noted. Hey, did you fuck touch them. my foot again? No, it's, it's <laughs> Calm <awesome>. down. <laughs> <laughs> Running gag. Uh, so you move on from Slider Hand. Yep. And you join Butterfly. Tell us about Butterfly. Uh, so they're a 
bunch of old metalheads playing 70s hard rock. Yep. I uh, went to their gig a couple of years ago and um, I really loved what the two guitarists were doing. Um, it's that Les Paul 70s, two guitarists sort of riffing off each other, playing different things that complement each other. And, you know, I had got onto it that night, got home at one in the morning and thought, I'll offer to join, you know. I remember and you, you, you messaged know, me. So I messaged the drummer, say, hey, I'm ready to go if you ever need another guitarist, sort of, you know. And a week later I got a message saying, can we give you a call? And then you had to learn all that song, and, um, all those songs. Yeah, so that was pretty cool because I didn't know at the time they were having a, a few problems with one of the guitarists. So um, they said, right, can you learn three songs in jam in a week? So I thought, oh, I'm going to learn the album. I've got to, do, got to go above of, and beyond. Of course you have to, yeah. So yeah, yeah. learnt it all, had a jam and was all good. Yep. Off, off we went and did that for a while and it was really hard to get any momentum because all the lockdowns were happening. So we'd have yeah. we'd have two or three jams, we'd get up to speed and then boom, we weren't allowed to leave for a few more months. And right. So it was sort of one step forward, two step back. So it took a, it took a long time to try and just even get a gig going. So we finally did. Lockdown was hard for you. I remember, you know, we kind of butted heads a few times on lockdown because yep. some people throve. Throve is that thrive. <laughs> Some people thrived. <laughs> Some people thrived. I thrived because yep. it was a chance to reset. But you were such a social butterfly. Yep. You used to go out a lot. Yeah, hit the piss, go watch bands. Yeah, and you were locked in. Yeah, like a caged animal. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was just the worst timing possible because I I'd, I'd left a long term relationship and had to move out. Yes, I remember. And I couldn't. You couldn't even go and inspect flats to. To look at you weren't allowed yep. inside, so yep. it was like I have nowhere to live. So I was couch hopping for a while, which wasn't a lot of fun. I ended up back at mum and dad's because it was like, well, you can't keep hitting your mates up at this stage in life. It's like I just don't want you there. But um, yeah, <laughs> back to mum and dad's. And eventually got yeah got got into my own place and it's been alright ever since. So you joined Butterfly. I got a little yep. snippet here, guys. So we got a little snippet here of uh, James playing in Butterfly doing a guitar solo. Let's check this out. We're not going to go totally full screen. We'll bring it up here, and uh, let's check him out. This is a live gig, so uh, let's see what the quality is like. Let's won't, see. won't be great, but but it, uh, hey. let's go. Wow. 
the hair, the flair, the debonair. <laughs> yes. I got it I like in it. there. You did. Well I done. got it in somehow. <laughs> so interestingly enough, though, uh, Phil, mass yep. confusion. Yep. When I was when we were both yeah, growing yeah. up, legend, legend Absolutely. bass player, legend Absolutely. in Melbourne, and he was in that band. Yeah, he's a great friend. He's yeah. a really close mate. Uh, I, I got to awesome. do some stuff with Phil when I was younger. He probably wouldn't even remember it. The drummer mm. in that band. Right. Who's that guy? Oh, Rob. Rob. Rob Wall. One and only, yeah. Yeah. And when I came out as trans, yep. I was walking down uh, Chapel Street. I had yep. no, one, no one knew. It was the first day I was out. Yep. And I got a brand new credit card and I went and dumped $1,000 on new clothes and makeup. And a yep. first person I ever ran into, yep. Rob Wog. Yep. Outside of, uh, uh, what's the up Revolver. Yep. And he was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, I've come out as trans. Yep. And he just went, fucking hugged me yep. and went, you got my support. Yeah. There you go. Legend. I'll never, never forget that. First yep. person I ran into. Yep. Um, you know, uh, so, and he, he play, he's played in fucking every band oh, in Australia, yeah. hasn't he? He's in the biggest death metal band of Australia, of Bramelin. Yeah. You know, yep. 30 year career. Yeah, yeah. Band, or Earth, there's so many bands. This, yeah, dude's yeah. A, this dude's a gun. He can sing, drums, yep. can play every fucking instrument. Yep. You know? He puts together really great gigs and. Questionable um, at some times yeah. oh, look, as a person, but aren't we all? Yeah, but he's you opinionated know? and. He's a vegan. Who isn't? Yeah. Vegan. He's got his own channel yeah. too where he goes off at people who aren't vegans. Yep. No, he's call, awesome. Calls them cunts. <laughs> Why not? He's <laughs> rad. No, no, he's, he's rad. So that, yep. that was Butterfly. Strange name. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that 70s sort of psychedelic thing that um, we tried to do a little bit of. The, the guys are still going, by the way. They're doing um, right. a support tour around Australia with um, the original singers joined again. Yep. Um, I sort of had enough of just the rehearsing side of it because we were travelling long distances. Yep. We're all from different parts of Melbourne. Yep, yep. And it was just like on a weeknight having to travel, you know, two, three hours on top of your rehearsal. Just like, I can't do this anymore. So I pulled a pin, but this, you know, wish the boys well. They're, they're Rehearsals all great, are hard, mates. man. I, I, like I'm, I'm. I, for some people who don't know, I'm, I'm considering joining a band right now. Right. Getting back into joining a band, and I'm nervous about the rehearsals. Yeah. But it's something a little bit different. It's not yeah. like your normal band, but um, it wears you down not only financially. Yeah. But as a vocalist going into rehearsal rooms, I always find it a real pain in the ass because the PAs are always shit and you're always screaming your guts up to be heard over the the terrible sound. And sometimes it just feels like you're throwing money uh, 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 into the toilet because Mm. nobody can hear me at rehearsal singing. That's why I don't really do bands anymore. Yep. So you leave Butterfly. Yep. And then you came back to – because when I started this channel – you were my first mod, I, I'm pretty sure. Sure, sure was. Yep. 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 And um, then you disappeared for a bit. Yep. And then you kind of came back into this community and have been doing collaborations with people. Yeah. What's What's this been like coming back into this community and working with people? It's been killer. I love it. It's um, my preferred way to work now is online collabs. It's, it's great. And who are who are some people? Is it only Lilo? Who, who are some of the people you've worked with here uh, on YouTube with people? Ron Ward. Ron Ward. Ron, I did an EP with Ron last year. Yep. Um, and also with Laurie, done a, a song with her and Loza. Another one coming up. Yep. Yep. And Leela. And Leela. Yep. And are you open to like work with any of the rest of the bozos here in this? <laughs> no. 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 Of course I am. It's just a time thing. I, don't, I love you. Oh. It's, I'd love to work with, I can think of 10 people right now who I'd love to do a collab with. It's just hours in the day. It's, Name them. All right. <laughs> Hugh Caldwell. All right, Hugh. Princess LDG. Princess. Uh, who else is in the chat there? Uh, Les, you know, everyone. Les. Anyone who plays here, I would love to Russ. do a song with. Absolutely. Doof, doof, doof. I want Russ to be the vocalist though. Of course. Yeah, because Russ has a sweet. Beautiful dulcet tones. Seductive voice, doesn't Dull, he? Yeah. I'll fucking knock <laughs> your fucking, fucking head off yeah, the yeah. fucking cunt. Um, <laughs> Brad, you know, I'd love to do a song with Brad. It'd be, be amazing. Yeah. It's just, you know, finding the time. It is. That is the thing. Time is yeah. of the essence. Let me look at my things here. So, all right. So now how are you making music now? Because you said 
you know, uh, all this time, you, the music you have made in the past. So you went out and got a Mac and yep. you've, you've got Sirius. What yeah. is the gear you have? We know your guitars. Yep. What's your setup at home for recording music? Right. Uh, a Mac Mini Pro. Right. Uh, a Steinberg UR22C interface. Yep. A Yamaha uh, mixing desk. I remember that Yamaha Thank mixing you. desk. Someone gave it to I me. I think I gave that yes, to you. Yes, you did. Thank you. And still it's, going? And it's still going oh, yeah. good. Like a purrs like a kitten. Unbelievable. Um, why, why the fuck did I give that away? I don't know. I <laughs> don't know. Yeah. Felt bad about something? I'm, I'm surprised know. you haven't pilfered through <laughs> the rest of my stuff here looking for shit. I that I've got I'm, my eye on a few things. Right. That looks pretty nice, that thing over there. That thing, you're, yeah. not getting that. you're not getting this thing. You hardly uh, use it, Jade. I do use it. Look, uh, it's so got dust on it. It does have dust on it. Oh, that's terrible. There's no dust on it now. <laughs> he's, he's, he's eyeing off this thing. Uh, this is, uh, what is it? It is uh, it's a micro freak. It's a micro freak by uh, Aturia. So that's it's yep. over there. We can't have that one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've got that gear. Uh, yeah. Monitors and what's the Mac that you got? Mac Mini Pro. Mac Mini Pro yep. gigs. What, what's it? Is it top end? What, what's uh, it? No, it's it's the base level Pro, which is sixteen gig RAM, um, five hundred and twelve hard drive. But yeah, it's plenty for what I do. And it's not like slowing down like poor old Rhett with his shit box computer. No, I can't slow this thing down. It's awesome. It's whatever you throw at it. You got a new mic too recently? Yeah, I did. I got a I got two mics. I got a K two a Rode. Yeah, and I got a. SM57 came yesterday. An SM57? Yes. Um, so that I can have I've the mic one. I've got one of on those my too. And into the desk. I've yeah. got an SM57 too. If you take that off. Now it's an FM57. <laughs> yeah. It Absolutely. is. It's the same fucking mic. Sure is. And now it's an SM58. Yeah. Best mics you could ever buy. Folks. They're amazing. If you are just starting out and yeah. you don't have one of these. Yeah. You are nuts, right? You can drive a truck over this and it'll still fucking work. Yep. And they sound great. Yeah. Yeah. Not I don't think they're really good for uh live live streaming, speaking, you know, podcasting kind of thing. Yeah. I think you, you need it. I think it's a good podcast mic or a condenser. Yep. They're not really good for that, but for having in your studio for micing up guitars. For sure. Even in a pinch doing vocals. Yeah. For um, you know, recording farts, anything like that. <laughs> right. You know? Because that's what I do in my spare time. How do you think I won this jammy over here? <laughs> right? That's that's what I do. Very robust, says Princess. Yeah, they're cool. Uh, Barry Glenn says you can knock nails with those things. You sure can. You absolutely can. They are they are amazing. Yep. And Logic Pro, of course, being Logic the, Pro. Uh, the interface of choice. Expensive piece of uh, software. Absolutely worth it. One one time payment. Yep. Job done. Yep. Oh, absolutely worth it. It's all, it's awesome. Um, I love the loops, Apple loops on the side there because I can't program drums. I tried to give it a go. I'm just hopeless at it. So drop and drag a loop. Or you need a go. drummer, don't you? Yeah. I don't play Do drums. I? <laughs> I don't play drums, only for Pete Johns. Yep. Uh, uh, Michael Song says, as a sound guy, I had tons of FM, SM57s and 58s that work on everything and they last forever. Indeed. I saw somebody talking about hanging a microphone over a guitar speaker box the other day and uh, people were saying, oh, you shouldn't fucking do that. I think that's a load of bullshit because, man, when you're doing live gigs and you hang an S, in, it doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't matter what the sound comes out. Mm. It works. You, yeah. you do use what you can. Those mics are great for that because not all the time you have something to stick in front of the and get the right. Yeah. You know, but an SM58, you can use it for bloody anything. It is it is fantastic. That's right. So you're making music now yeah. and and uh, we know what you're making it with. How often do you get to sit down? What's, what's the process now for you to actually start writing a Cold Acre song? I would sit at home on a weekend. Right. And either pick up a guitar and start writing Riff wise, or I'll open up Logic and start tinkering around um, with the, either my keyboard, which oh yeah, sorry, I got a, a Roland keyboard as well, which um. And you got your eye on my micro freak. Well, yeah, of course. You know, it's different and nice. It is nice. Yeah. So, so you, you got a keyboard now? Oh, I've had that for years. I've right. Had, yeah, had that for a long time. T tinkling the ivories. Yeah. Yep. Tinkling them. What the 
<laughs> Why? Because it's there. <laughs> I, I intentionally moved it like over there and you still found me. <laughs> it's not real, folks. I'm no. It's not actually happening, right? Yeah, right on. Thank you for Whoa, doing what's, that. Well, I pressed the wrong button. Hang on. What's coming up in the future? What are you going to do in the future with Cold Egg? Are you planning on recording an album or something like that now that you have songs? Are you going to release stuff on DistroKid or something like that? Probably not. I'm just happy just putting them up on YouTube. Really? Just chipping away. Yeah, I'm not. Don't really care about money or anything like that because you know who's going to make money off it anyway. <laughs> I don't so, release stuff on DistroKid to make money. Yeah. Well, you know. You know, I just like having it there. I, I would yeah. love what I hate. I hate when I have favorite artists and um, I can't get their music on. I just can't grab it on Apple or Spotify. I hate yeah. that. That's why I like. People who put their music up. What about Bandcamp? Have you thought about putting music up on there? No, it hasn't really occurred to me yet. Should um, he put, folks, should he put music on Bandcamp? Put you put a one in the chat if you think that Cold Acre should put his music on Bandcamp at least. Okay. I'll consider it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll consider it. <laughs> I would like to um, make an album of Chill Zone music with Leela and maybe do like a small run of physical things. We've... We've thrown that idea around and it would be good once we amass enough, you know, 40 minutes worth of music. Yep. Potentially put it together as a thing just for fun. Speaking of Chill Zone, let's, uh, let's play a, uh, another song and then we'll close out. So yep. we've got like six minutes here and then we'll come back and close out the show. People type in one. Everyone's doing the right thing. Thank you guys for partaking in the one nonsense. In the, in the, put a two in there if you think. You shouldn't. <laughs> One and Distro Kid, says Barry Glenn. There we go. Let's play another Chill Zone song. Tell me about this song. It's a Cosmic Oh yeah, Barber. This is a Cosmic Jam of Leela's again. Um, she asked me to put some guitar to it and there it is. And there it is. Yeah. Um, there it is. Yep. Um, there it is. All right, we'll play this and we'll be, we'll be back to close out the show and let you all get on your way and do all the things you need to do. Let's play this now. Do the intro, hippie. Boom. There we go. Relax. Relax, my brother. Relax. We're going for a ride. 
Boom. What was that song called? I can't remember. Cosmic Barber. Cosmic Barber uh, by uh, Chill Zone, which is uh, Lou Reality and Cold Acre. You got more songs coming out for, you got something in the works at yeah, the moment? Yep. Yeah. Um, got sort of about, well, don't want to quantize, quantize it, but probably 20, 30%. Quantize. Quantize. <laughs> as opposed to a oversize. Um, yeah, we've got something that's, the wheels, the wheels are in motion. Bloody alcoholic. You've led me to drink. Oh, I have. 9.53 in the morning. <laughs> 9.53 in the morning, folks. Cheers. Here's what, to what a an influence. second beer. The irony, cheers, cheers. of you drinking water and me drinking beer. Be Freaky going. Friday live here on the show. He's led me to drink because I'm so stressed all the time. <laughs> so you've got new chill zone coming. Yes. What's going on with you and Ron Ward? What, what have you heard? Well, I heard there's a baby on the way. Yes. Right. He's six months. And what's is have you have you had the gender reveal yet? <laughs> Not yet. What are you hoping for? Oh, I'd be happy with either. Oh, really? That's yes. come on. Yes. Pick a gender. So you want you want a uh, an uh, an envy. I'd like a little Ronette. You want a Z. <laughs> you want a they them. <laughs> yes. Awesome. What are you thinking of calling the baby between you and Ron? Something in Vietnamese. Doma. Yes. Do, Doma. Yep. There we go. Why are we? Why I don't know. Are, well, we're talking about having a baby with Ron. But, well, so, but are you still making music with Ron Ward? Uh, we haven't uh, recently, no. Right. He's, is it hard to work with Ron Ward? No. No? It's easy. It is? Yeah. Yeah? He doesn't, like, forget his own name and stuff? He does all that. Right, yeah, but so do you feel like when you work with Ron, you're like a um, a carer at the same time? Yes, <laughs> you've got a nurse in through. You do. It's like handling Joe Biden. You've just got to <laughs> you've got to help him off the stage and point him in the right direction. <laughs> right, and then he's okay. Right. So, but <laughs> he's kind of like Joe Biden and Donald Trump combined because he's got. He just makes up words and stuff that's that right. just ludicrous, and he's a doddering old fool. That's right. 
Oh, yep. Oh, it's a beautiful amalgamation of the two. See, we're partisan here, bipartisan here. We, they're both <laughs> assholes. They're both assholes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so Thomas is laughing. We've got a political joke in there, uh, Sleepy Joe. Look at all this stuff. <laughs> we got some political stuff in there just for a bit of a giggle. Um, just what, for the record, we hate all politicians, we don't do, we? We do. With equal, all politicians yep. can suck big fat dicks. Correct. Absolutely. Because they're all Absolutely. assholes. Of course they are. Especially here in Australia, banning vapes, all this yep. shit. Yep. You know? Yep. Yep. Um, what's it like to work with uh, Rhett? Great. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, have you learnt things from being Rhett's friend and Absolutely. watching your show? What, yeah. have, what have you learnt from Rhett? How to mix. How to mix. How to mix. <laughs> Funnily enough, um, he's doing yeah, well. He's been a really great help. Um, cheers, Rhett. He's yeah. been a, a really great help in the last twelve months. Just yeah. learning how to. Um, we love Rhett. Yeah, produce songs. So yeah. It's amazing that somebody so talented at mixing and doing all that stuff yep. is such an asinine child in the chat, isn't it? He's a big baby. He is a big baby, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. It's, it's amazing that he's actually looking after his own relative. And you would think yeah, that he's, it was... Yeah, he's the carer. Yeah, you would think it would be the poor other woman. way around. Yeah, I know. Fucking <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, all right. We're, we're coming to the end of the show. We've only got one more song to play, guys. So thank you all for hanging out and... Uh, you know, let us know by hitting the like button. And if you want to send a super chat or anything like that, I'm not going to stop you, all right? I'm not going to, like, if you want to do that to appreciate the show, but never expect it, just putting it out there. Let us know what you think about this in live studio. Do you like this? Has it been okay? Like, do you feel like we've been isolating you by talking to each other and having the, these weird camera angles? Mm. It is hello. It's been interesting to set up and, and do this. This is probably the most nerve-wracking interview I've done in a while. Yeah. Just for n hoping that it's going to work. Yep. You know? And I think I think it's been okay. I think we've been all good. So, uh, you've got um you've got Chill Zone in the works. Yep. Is there any hidden Cold Acre songs? Yes, there is. The one that you played earlier on uh Fallen into You. That's sort of a 3-year-old recording. Yep. Um a whole different ending was written when I was with Butterfly and I'm going to record that and um, release it properly. So, yeah, there's a few things going. Good. Wish there was more hours in the day. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about is women. <laughs> right. <laughs> why are they? What so, would you like to know? <laughs> why are they so fucking mental? <laughs> Your word's not mine. No. My last girlfriend was, uh, she was 21. Yep. And I was uh, 44. <laughs> yep. And it went really well. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you a very, uh, do you, when you love, do you invest everything? Yes. You're very, so yep. do you get hurt? Yes. Easy? You fall hard? Uh, not easy, but when it happens, it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. We've talked about this just, you know, as friends. Yeah, yeah. I struggle. I, I think it's yeah. one of the reasons I won't try and date anybody anymore is because right. I'm too scared. Yeah. I know how much I invest. Like uh, for those of you who know what I do here on the channel, yeah. I go hard and I go hard at everything. Yeah. And, and I'm afraid to let somebody back into my life and go hard. Yeah. And then, and then be hurt. Because there's so much brain rot in human beings at the moment. Yeah. Well, you've got to have the good and the bad. You, you can't have just one. They come hand in hand and... That's why I'm going to Thailand. <laughs> All right. So I can have more than just one in, in both hands. And the good and the bad. Yeah. yeah. And then I can walk away the next day and not get too invested. Oh, well, that sounds okay. So if you want to help out with suit, that's why I mentioned Super Chats. That's where I'm going to Thailand <laughs> and all that stuff. All Beer right. and hookers. Beer and hookers yeah. and shooting some amazing stuff for you all while I'm in Thailand. Yeah. I'm going to ask you with the last two questions and then we're going to play a song to get out of here. The sure. famous final two questions. Yes. If you were on a desert island yep. and you didn't have a volleyball named uh, whatever it's... <laughs> no, yep. The, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to call it... Um, Mike FB, right? <laughs> you didn't have a soccer ball to kick in the fucking head every day. Yeah. What album would you like to get you through the hard times? Gee, that's tough. <laughs> mm, okay. 
Can I take two? Or no, I can only take one, can't I? You can have two. All right, I would take uh, Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti. Nice. Not because it's their best album, but because it's their longest. So we're going so, first. So, um, but it's also got the most value. Ver- yeah, variety as well. Yep. So, yep. you know, that's just an album that I can keep going back to and not get sick of. Sure. And I'd probably go with Radiohead's OK Computer, which is my favourite album yeah, of all yeah. time. It's a fucking killer album, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I, I put that on when I'm like just – when I'm at the end of my rope. Yeah, 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 that's and right. And you I, want to hear someone who's about to lose it. And you and, know what I get yeah. from it, from that album? I feel like I'm not alone. Yeah, yeah. And I feel better. Yep, totally. He's got an amazing way of like inviting you into the human mind to mm, yeah. to say – Yeah, uh, yeah. The struggle's real. In yeah, other words. and the way that his vocals are mixed in that, it's really intimate and sounds like he's right singing to your ear and yeah, it, it, he's right he, with you. Yeah. It, it feels parasocial. It feels yeah. like he's every line he's actually singing to you instead yep. of like a broad yeah. fishing net. That's a really yeah. hard thing to do. Jeff it Buckley is. does that for me as well too. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. All right. So our final question uh, is, if you were giving advice to somebody starting out making music, when would be the best? Time for them to start. In one hour's time because <laughs> you're going to spend the next 60 minutes cleaning your room. Yeah. Get all the crap out of the way. Yep. Um, just have it bare bones, no distractions, turn things off and just have a nice clean working space and off you go. Yep, just like this clean studio exactly. here. Just like this. Isn't this studio clean? Yeah. It's not that bad. I know there's some dust. Yeah, on that keyboard that you don't really use anymore. No, I do use that keyboard. But uh, is my house clean? Immaculate. Immaculate? Yep. Does And the hot water works, so audible yep, video. Yeah, back on, yep. Audible video for you. <laughs> That's for you, audible nice video. One, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, do it. Do it, guys. Make music, make things, do things. And if you can't, uh, you know what? Take a break. Go do something else. It's not that important. You know, making music's fantastic, but... Uh, you can't be making it all the time if you're forced stuff. Go do something else. Go play some video games. Go get a hooker. Uh, go, uh, what else? Something else. Throw something else out for the kind of people. Go play some to... cricket. Go play some cricket. <laughs> yeah. Go play some cricket or something like that. We're going to play our last track today. Tell us about this song, uh, which I always screw the name up. Yep. What's it called? Uh, Astray. Ashtray. Yep. <laughs> When I first played this song, guys, I called it Ashtray. Yep. And I don't know why, because it's called Astray. <laughs> There's no H in it. Correct. What is the song about? Um, it's about <laughs> being at the end of your rope. Right. About um, wanting to throw it all away, give up. Mm-hmm. But uh, finding something there to keep you going. Good. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what we all want here. So. Yeah. Let's play this and um, uh, let's do the thank you. So thank you all for being here. There's been, you know, all the way through this, over 40 people. So thank you once again for yeah, your thanks kindness. Thanks, everyone. It's been awesome just to hang out and see you all today. And yeah. To listen to my stuff. Thanks heaps. Yeah, look, he, he he's an amazing artist. And let me just say to you as a friend, it's been so cool to see you start releasing music into this community because, you know, you, you joined the channel when I started doing this and you're a mod for a bit, then you disappeared and I would have conversations go, with you going, no, man, this community is really cool. And then yeah. you came into it and it's just everyone's loved your music and I, I, I just think as a friend hearing your music now and just hearing what you do, I'm a massive fan. Thank you. And um, I aspire to... Like as a vocalist as well, I'm so I just want to reach over and punch you in the face right now for being such a natural vocalist. Thank you. That's a compliment. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, no, but and thanks for coming here today. And, yeah, thanks and, for having me and spending time coming to the studio. It's been cool. We are going to hang out after this and uh, yep. maybe have one or two maybe of these. Have one or two of these. <laughs> I have to record my opening hour for this weekend because I won't be here this weekend. There is no walk with me this weekend. I'm taking the weekend off, guys. I've, I'm going out and setting myself free from YouTube, but I will be recording the opening hour uh, for uh, this weekend so you'll get to see that. And, uh, yeah, thank you all for hanging out with us today. Thank you also to, of course, 
My wonderful, 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 get, get my shit together here, wonderful sponsor, of course, which is mm, Bistro Kid. There we go. Thank you, Distro Kid, for sponsoring the show. We love you so much, and uh, I couldn't do this without you. Distro Kid are just an amazing sponsor here of the channel. If you use my link, you'll get 7% off. You know the deal. All right, so we're going to play Ashtray. Astray, sorry. Yep. It's all set up. Folks, do the things that make you happy. Mistakes make you better and we'll all rise together. Thank you so much for supporting the show today. We'll see you on the weekend. We've got lots of cool stuff coming up over the week on the channel here. Lots of new apps and stuff like that. Anything you'd like to say to people before we go, you can look down the camera. Oh, thanks for listening today and being supportive. And um, everyone keep making your music. It's awesome stuff. Awesome. Let's get yeah. out of here. Love you all. Here is Astray by Cold Akil. Boom. Boom. Press the right buttons. Let's go. Tomorrow's secrets yet untold 